Whether it's in a dive bar full of local musicians, a guitar lesson in a college music program, or even a gathering on the biggest stages in music, there's one song that compels guitarists of all genres towards it. In fact, the song even has some evil undertones. Maybe you know it. In fact, I know you know it. Everybody knows this song. It's the most covered song in rock history. Maybe. I went down to the crossroads. In the 1930s, the myth of Robert Johnson selling his soul at the crossroads for musical talent emerged. His song Crossroad Blues is what started this whole thing, and this story isn't new. You know, I heard Stevie Ray Vaughan made a deal with the devil, too. Nobody knows what Stevie got, but the devil got a guitar lesson. Ta anyway, you may not know that Robert Johnson's acquaintances deny this devil nonsense. In fact, they describe Johnson as a womanizer who's in legal troubles from time to time. Robert, you dirty dog, you're making up devil stories to two-time your woman? Come on, man. But I will say, the concept of Crossroads is a little creepy. This weird article I found on an occult website says boundaries are thin at Crossroads, where the unlikely and unworldly cross over. Just imagine never feeling safe at a four-way stop ever again. But scholars will agree that Robert Johnson probably got so much skill because he worked hard, right? Despite that clear, boring logic, the myth persists. Because we don't really have any pictures of Robert Johnson other than this. Good God, this dude definitely looks like he's possessed. Robert Johnson also died young. He's part of the infamous 27 Club, along with other famous musicians who met their demise at 27 years old, notably Hendrix, Cobain, Joplin, Jim Morrison, Amy Winehouse, etc. And you know, the myth spreads because people like me making videos on Crossroads. I think the first one I made was like four years ago. And now I'm making this one, and Mary made a video about it a while back, and Marty, and well, look, everyone covers this song, even on YouTube. So, why? Well, influence. British blues musicians in the 1960s, notably Eric Clapton, you heard him, revisited Johnson's music, incorporating it into their repertoire. Clapton's, Clapton, <laughs> Clapton, Clapton's version of Crossroads exemplified this revival, electrifying classic blues for rock audiences. Obviously, Crossroads is a constant staple in Clapton shows, evolving over time with slower and heavier renditions. Down to the now, the original song Crossroad Blues by Robert Johnson, it's more of a flourish on that A, which Eric Clapton pays homage to as well throughout his decades of playing the song. Changing the song up like this is prevalent among bands across the world who've been playing this song, like I mentioned, for years and years. And the arrangement of the song is incredibly straightforward, of course. It's a 1-4-5 blues progression. And it's easy to modify based on the feel or the tempo or even the harmony, which we'll get to. We'll start with the traditional cream groove, which is straight ahead and up-tempo and includes a lick every guitar player should know. <laughs> Beyond that awesome riff that marks the refrain of the song, let's look at the main harmony of the song, which I mentioned is a three chord blues structure of one, four, five in the key of A, which means A, D, and E. Now these are all played as dominant chords, which if you're familiar with music theory, oh, you're not familiar with music theory? Well, you don't even have to go to the crossroads to get help. You can just use the link in the description to sign up for Guitar Super System, where I've just launched a brand new music theory section that complements this lesson quite nicely, I must say. I don't require your soul. Just 10 bucks. Link in the description. Thanks for your support. So while the Cream and Clapton versions of Crossroads carried the tune through time, this song had another resurgence in the late 2000s when John Mayer covered it, adhering to the Clapton formula, but changing a couple critical components, including the harmony as well as playing it with his fingers rather than a pick. And the finger picking technique is best internalized by getting the John Mayer bounce. It's this pocket of rhythm that once you get it down, it's sort of hard to play the riff wrong. And I went over that when I was learning Neon. It's a video called the John Mayer song that nobody knows how to play or something along those lines. Same concept here where you have that thwomp. <laughs> 
You start slowly with just a little fragment. One rhythm at a time if you want, adding in little parts of this groove. Paying attention to where the anticipations are and which fingers do what at what time will create this John Mayer bounce, the pocket. Then when you start to speed it up, it'll just fall right into place. Another notable change Mayer made, changing the E7 into an F sharp minor chord in order to really bring out that change. One chord change just adds for a much more modern vibe to a song that's been tattooed on our guitar playing souls. And here's some of my favorite moves to do over this chord progression. A few things you can try that are a little out of the norm that you would normally be used to just playing through the minor pentatonic scale. You can start with using spread voice triads to replace the standard blues chords in the open part of the guitar neck, which of course you can learn about in Guitar Super System, but they're very airy and nice sounding. Of course, that's a pretty laid back feel. Maybe you want something a little more captivating to burst into your guitar solo. In which case, I offer you this lick. Another approach entering the solo is taking a staccato feel. Which, funny enough, Corey and I both started our guitar solos when we played. Maybe you want something of the bending variety. you can add some little jazzy octave lines. Outlining the chords and playing through changes is of course another approach, taking those dominant seventh chords and really going through your arpeggios, or in my case, triads I've shown you. One of the most fun songs to finish playing because who doesn't like a big fat one chord on the downbeat with a bunch of guitar wankery to end it all? Despite the evolution of the song's interpretation, it remains a significant part of blues history, showcasing the enduring legacy of Robert Johnson and his influence on generations of musicians and people like Clapton, Mayer, and us. We're keeping that crossroads on the map, just trying to flag a ride, you know? Oh no, I, I'm just making a video. Uh, yeah, hang on. I I just gotta go talk to this, this. I don't know why I I gotta go.